everyone, uh, Count Zero here with a quick Nintendo Power Retrospective update vlog. Long story short, I missed last month, just for general schedule reasons. Um, since then, um, Nintendo occasionally has puts a bee in their bonnet when it comes, because they be in their bonnet when it comes to how people talk about their games. Um, not fond of emulation, even if it's uh, if, even if it's using legally dumped ROMs of games you own, um, using software that is typically made um, uh, for consoles that them say themselves are not available anymore, though the, the games may be available through, say, the Nintendo Switch Online experience. So, when this happens, they tend to crack down on channels a bunch, and they tend to be really heavy-handed about it. I have, thus far, managed to avoid the hammer. Certainly, other channels have not been so lucky. Um, and though with the level of aggro they get about this, it sometimes spills over to channels that, like, theoretically are doing everything right. Um no piracy involved whatsoever, uh, all their bases are covered, everything is fine. So, like, and this one like, feels particularly more aggro than usual. Oftentimes this tends to be kind of when a new car, around the time when a new console is coming out also, or due to be announced or that sort of thing. Uh, like, I would not 100% be shocked if he, if Nintendo decided to go after Jeremy Parrish over his NES Works channel. Uh, by the way, you should check out what he's doing. It's really good stuff. Um, he's not as far ahead in the timeline as I am, but he's also doing a much more game-by-game -game focused take on things, and he's also doing um, coverage, work, part of his coverage, looking at how games are covered, or in often many cases not covered, in Nintendo Power, which makes a nice thing to watch alongside so my, some of my earlier episodes, we get the big picture overview of, hey, here's what Nintendo Power Magazine is covering. Here's a deep dive into the game itself and its history, the developers who made it, and in turn, often then going back and saying, yeah, and this game, which was actually originally made, released in Japan in, say, 1986, 1987, but came out in the U.S. in 1988, 1989, um, didn't hold up as well, and consequently didn't get the same level of coverage of Nintendo Power as other titles did. That sort of thing. Or perhaps a game got a bunch of coverage in Nintendo Power, but maybe still wasn't very good, but it got it because it was a newer game. In any case. Um, recommend checking out his stuff, put a link in the show notes if you're not subscribed already. Um, I would hope his channel would be one of the things that would come up in your YouTube recommendations if you're watching this, but anyway. But the point is, while Nintendo is being aggro, now was probably for me to have to take a little short break from Nintendo Power Retrospectives. Um, also give me a chance to maybe like, get some scripts, just a big buffer of scripts together, and so that when things are ready, when things have settled down a bit, we can get back and hit the ground running. Um, and that's where I'll be at for that. I might try doing some slightly different retro gaming stuff outside from game streams and that sort of thing on my Counts Zero Plays channel. Um, we're looking at some older games. Um, possibly taking a look at like some other titles that are being covered in, say, Expert Gamer, EGM2, Tips and Tricks Magazine, that sort of thing. Some of these will still be Nintendo titles, but um, just focusing more specifically on an individual game and the coverage of it in game magazine, in uh, a strategy-focused game magazine. I bring that up because a big chunk of what Nintendo Power was for a significant portion of its life, a little less so at where we're at now, but still there, was as a strategy magazine. Uh, as it was here, not just here's these games, here's screenshots of them and that sort of stuff, and look how cool they are, but also here's how you beat it. That sort of stuff. So we'll, I may get into that with, say, EGM2, because I also have a close... As much as, like, I, if you've followed my blog for a long time, I've had a long, close relationship and 
affinity for EGM magazine. I also have a significant affinity for EGM2 and later Expert Gamer. So, and also Game Now, uh, which came later. I basically had a complete run of Game Now magazine. Uh, I think I still have it somewhere in the garage. Anyway, um, so I might cover some of that, but that'll be much more focused on specific games. So like doing kind of like what Jeremy Parrish is doing, but rather than going through chrono chronologically playing through a platform's um, library, focusing on, okay, here's a game covered in an issue of a magazine. I'm going to play through this. I'm going to take a look at how it was covered in the magazine as well in terms of its featured strategy guide and that sort of thing. Just focus a game at a time. We'll see how that goes. I mean, this may become the kind of thing where I end up if Nintendo, because also Nintendo Power Magazine, at least this era in particular, is owned by Nintendo, there is the potential for them getting a little more obnoxious about that side of things as well. So we'll see how all of this turns out. But where would be, wherever things go from here, it will still remain on this YouTube channel. So keep watching this space and enjoy all my other coverage and all my other stuff in the meantime, my book reviews and that sort of stuff. I honestly, I've been meaning want to cover other video games and stuff on this channel as well. So catch you later. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Tossing me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.